Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. Today is the day we settle the ultimate debate. Who are the top 10 horror villains of all time? We're talking the icons, the legends, the characters who kept us hiding behind our pillows for decades. From the classics to the creepy newcomers, get ready for some killer reveals, shocking surprises, and maybe even a little nightmare fuel. Join me for this episode of Ranking Rumble. In the shadowy corners of cinema, horror villains reign supreme. They are the embodiment of our deepest fears, the monsters under the bed and the shadows that dance at the edge of our vision. These antagonists come in all shapes and sizes, wielding terror in a multitude of ways. Slasher villains like Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers are the embodiment of relentless violence, driven by a single-minded purpose or an insatiable rage. They stalk their victims with brutal efficiency. On the other hand, supernatural entities like ghosts and demons prey on our fear of the unknown. From Samara's vengeful spirit in the ring to the nightmarish denizens of the Cenobite world in Hellraiser, they represent a terrifying glimpse into a reality beyond our comprehension. Horror villains aren't always about physical threats. Psychological tormentors like Hannibal Lecter or Norman Bates they play a twisted game with the human mind. They exploit our vulnerabilities and blur the lines between sanity and madness, leaving us questioning who the real monster is. Whether through brute force, supernatural chills, or psychological manipulation, horror villains exist to terrify us, and in doing so, force us to confront the darkness that lurks within ourselves and the world around us. Like always, this is just my opinion. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of horror villains to choose from. So if one that you like isn't on this list, just put it down in the comments and tell me why you like that particular villain. With that out of the way, grab your popcorn, make your way to your seat, and let's head down to the ring to get this rumble started. Starting us off at number 10 is going to be Art the Clown. Art the Clown is a terrifying character from the Terrifier franchise, though he first appeared in a couple short films and the anthology film All Hallows' Eve. Unlike many slasher villains who have backstories or motivations, Art, he's, he's an enigma. He is clad in a simple black and white clown suit with grease paint that emphasizes his perpetually wide, menacing grin. His silence and unpredictable nature make him even more terrifying to me. Art's creepiness comes from his subversion of the familiar. Clowns are supposed to be figures of fun and amusement, but Art turns that expectation on its head. He is a brutal and relentless killer who seems to enjoy inflicting pain. His lack of remorse and seemingly supernatural durability add to the horror. Art is a great horror villain because he taps into our primal fear of the things that are supposed to make us happy in the creepiest way possible. I think he has potential to move up this list in the future as well. I'm excited for Terrifier 3 and to see what Art has in store for us. Next up at number 9 is going to be the Xenomorph. The Xenomorph from Alien isn't just a horror villain, it's a masterclass in creature design and suspense. H.R. Geiger's biochemical monstrosity is a terrifying blend of alien and insect, with a sleek obsidian body and an elongated head hinting at its violent purpose. The xenomorph's true horror lies in the unknown. We see glimpses of its razor-sharp claws and teeth, but much of its form remains shrouded in darkness, leaving the audience to imagine the worst. Its life cycle from face hugger to chest burster to the final horrifying adult is a constant reminder of its adaptability and ruthlessness. The xenomorph's intelligence adds another layer of fear as well. It's not a mindless beast. It's a cunning predator, not to be confused with, well, the predator, that stalks its prey using the ship's vents to move unseen and striking with terrifying speed. In a confined space station, the xenomorph becomes an inescapable nightmare. There's just a constant sense of vulnerability. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart-pounding, chill-inducing five-star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. Coming in at number eight is going to be Norman Bates. 
Norman Bates from Psycho is a horror villain who chills audiences not with supernatural powers or brute force, but by being seemingly ordinary. At first glance, Norman appears as a meek motel manager with a social awkwardness that kind of makes you feel sympathy for him. However, this facade masks a deeply disturbed psyche, fractured by a twisted relationship with his domineering mother. The horror of Norman Bates lies in the blurring of lines between sanity and madness. His dissociative identity disorder manifests as his deceased mother who emerges to commit brutal acts of violence. This internal struggle makes him both perpetrator and victim, forcing the audience to question just who or what is truly evil. Norman's vulnerability and his capacity for kindness further complicate our perception. He is a villain we can't simply dismiss as a monster, but rather a tragic figure whose mental illness fuels the horror. And this is even more evident in Psycho 2. Our number 7 entrant in this rumble is Jigsaw. Jigsaw is both complex and enduring. His appeal stems from a twisted sense of morality. Jigsaw, whose real name is John Kramer, doesn't see himself as a murderer, but as a judge, jury, and sometimes executioner forcing people to appreciate the value of life. He targets those who have wasted or disregarded their own lives or the lives of others, subjecting them to elaborate and gruesome games that force them to fight for survival. Jigsaw's horror lies in the manipulation and the perversion of justice. His traps are ingenious, playing on the victim's deepest fears and exploiting their physical and moral weaknesses. We, the audience, are constantly on edge, not just fearing for the victims, but also questioning Jigsaw's twisted philosophy. Is he a deranged sadist or a force for twisted redemption? This ambiguity, coupled with his chilling voice on the cassette tapes, make Jigsaw a truly unsettling villain. At number six, we have the Dream Demon, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger claws his way into our nightmares for a reason. Unlike the silent stalkers of many slasher films, Freddy is a sadistic showman. His burned visage and finger knives are instantly recognizable, forever etched in horror iconography. But Freddy's true terror lies in his invasion of the dreamscape. He preys on the deepest fears and vulnerabilities of his teenage victims, twisting their dreams into personalized hellscapes. This violation of a safe space, sleep itself, fuels the nightmare. Freddy's personality adds another layer of dread, too. He's a wisecracking, cruel entity who taunts and torments his victims. His dark humor and undeniable charisma make him oddly captivating, even as he delivers his signature kill. This blurring of lines between fear and morbid amusement keeps audiences on edge. Freddy Krueger isn't just a monster, he's a twisted reflection of our own anxieties, a nightmare come to life with razor sharp wit and a killer glove. Starting off the second half of this rumble at number 5 is The Creeper. And before I go any farther here, I want to say I know what the director of Jeepers Creepers did and it's disgusting, it's vile. That being said, I really like Jeepers Creepers. And that extends to the character of the Creeper as well. He's a terrifying creature that thrives and feeds on primal fear. We know very little about its origins, motivations, or even its true form. Just glimpses of leathery wings, razor-sharp teeth, and unsettling yellow eyes. This lack of explanation fuels our fear. We can't understand it, so we can't predict it. Making it a truly unpredictable and unstoppable force. Adding to the horror is the Creeper's cyclical feeding frenzy. Every 23rd spring for 23 days, it awakens with a singular monstrous goal to collect human body parts. This ritualistic aspect makes it seem almost otherworldly, a predator driven by an ancient and disturbing hunger. The Creeper's intelligence adds another layer of dread to the story. It's not a mindless monster. It stalks its prey, using its senses to pick out fear and exploit weaknesses. Its cunning and predatory nature make it all the more terrifying. Coming in at number four is The Thing. It's a masterclass in creating terror through paranoia. Unlike monstrous figures with clear weaknesses, The Thing is so, so much more. It can perfectly imitate any living organism it consumes, making it impossible to distinguish friend from foe. This constant suspicion breeds distrust and isolation among the characters in the remote Antarctic research station. The very act of trust becomes a potential death sentence. 
The thing's horror extends beyond its physical form. Its ability to assimilate and mimic raises profound questions about identity and humanity. What defines us if our very bodies can be hijacked? This existential dread lingers long after the film ends. The thing's ambiguity and its ability to exploit the fragility of human connection make it a truly chilling and enduring horror villain. Our number three entrant is going to be the Graboid. Look, I get it. I know it's dumb, but I have so much nostalgia and love for Tremors that I can't help but put Graboids here on the list. They offer a unique brand of horror that's both terrifying and oddly charming. Unlike many iconic villains, they lack the overt malice or supernatural elements. Their fear factor comes from their unexpectedness and relentless nature. They lurk beneath the seemingly harmless desert floor and strike with surprising speed and devastating force. Imagine walking across the seemingly solid ground only to have the earth erupt beneath you, revealing a monstrous maw ready to devour you whole. The appeal of Graboids also lies in their primal fear factor. They're giant underground worms, something already unsettling to many. Their subterranean existence taps into our fear of the unknown, what lurks beneath our feet. Their attacks are often unseen at first, with only tremors and the screams of victims hinting at the horror below. This suspenseful buildup keeps the audience on edge, waiting for the inevitable moment the Graboid bursts forth. Coming in at number two is Jason Voorhees. The machete-wielding madman from Friday the 13th may seem like a one-note slasher on the surface, but beneath the hockey mask lies a surprisingly enduring horror villain. His effectiveness stems from a potent mix of brutality, relentlessness, and a touch of the supernatural. Jason's physical presence is undeniably imposing. His hulking stature and trademark hockey mask transform him into an unstoppable force of destruction. He takes a beating that would incapacitate anyone else, constantly shrugging off injuries and powering through the pain to continue his killing spree. This relentlessness creates a sense of hopelessness for the characters and the audience alike. There's no reasoning with him, no escape from his unwavering pursuit. Further adding to his mystique are the later films that turn Jason supernatural, making him seem basically unkillable. This blurring of the lines between man and monster keeps the audience guessing and fuels the fear. Jason Voorhees may be simple, but his effectiveness as a horror villain, it's undeniable. All right, it's time to unveil our number one entrant in this ranking rumble, and this should come as no surprise if you've seen any of my videos before. My favorite horror villain of all time is Michael Myers. He is the embodiment of pure evil, and he endures as a horror villain for a number of reasons. Unlike some villains with elaborate backstories, Michael's motivations remain shrouded in mystery in the original film. He's purely and simply evil. A blank slate of silent menace, often referred to as the shape, for this very reason. This ambiguity forces us to project our own fears onto him. Adding to his dread is Michael's relentless nature and apparent indestructibility. He seems to possess an almost superhuman ability to absorb punishment and keep coming back for more. This relentlessness creates a sense of hopelessness for his victims and the audience as well. There's no reasoning with him, no outsmarting him. He's a relentless killing machine driven by an unknown force. Whether it's pure evil or a supernatural curse, Michael's lack of a clear weakness makes him a truly terrifying foe. He's a reminder that sometimes the most frightening monsters are the ones we can't understand. So, there you have it. That is my ranking of the top 10 horror villains of all time. Did your favorite make the cut? Let me know down in the comments. Also, there is a brand new Wrestling With Horror shirt available now at ProWrestlingTees.com, so go check that out. The link is in the description. And if you're interested in saving 20% off of your order from Redcon 1 or supporting the channel on Patreon, check out those links as well. And if you enjoyed this look at some terrifying villains, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there's no count out for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.